Hi, my name is Ben Briggs. I'm just going to quickly talk about my research for a few minutes. Um, so let's go here. I am Ben Briggs. We did that. Uh, right now, I'm a postdoc at the University of Utah here. It's lovely. And uh, before that, I was a student in Toronto under the great Ragnar Bullfights. So basically, I think about some things in commutative algebra and some things in non-commutative algebra. And what that comes down to is a bunch of homological stuff, which I'll talk about now. So I'm thinking probably most of the people watching this are going to be from the commutative algebra side. So um, let's start there. This first thing, okay, I really like thinking about completed sections recently. It turns out completed sections has this have this like incredibly pristine homological behavior going on. The derived category of a completed section ring is a really lovely place to live. And so I think about that a lot. And uh, I have two main approaches written down here. The first thing is probably a bit more classical. There's this thing called the Conor module and this thing called the cotangent complex. And you can characterize the complete intersection property in terms of those. And I'm, I'm just going to talk more about that in a second. But first, the second thing is um, probably a bit more modern. Um, these proxy small objects, were, they were defined by Dwyer, Greenlees, and Nianga a little while back. And maybe after the work of Josh Pollitt, it's starting to seem like um, the complete intersection type behavior of a ring is controlled by these proxy small objects in a similar way to how the regular behavior of a ring is controlled by the, its perfect complexes, if that means anything. Um, but that's another story for another day. Uh, I have some work going on uh, about that with uh, Eloisa Grifo, Srikanthi Angar, Yanina Letts, and Josh Pollitts here. Um, maybe, OK, so I'll skim over the rest of these. I have some work on a cohomological support theory these, this, using this, these cohomology operators of Galax and, and Eisenberg with these guys, Jian Liu, Daniel McCormick, and Josh Pollitts. And um, a, w one thing which is going on in the background of this a lot is Hoshul cohomology. So Hoshul cohomology is it's kind of an important tool in pretty much all of this. Uh, I like to think about this a lot. And I have some stuff going on with uh, Shriganthi Engar and Greg Stevenson with that. And then this last bullet point is just there to point out that uh, a lot of these ideas are just stolen from algebraic topology. So in particular, in my thesis, I was thinking a lot about this thing called the homotopy Lie algebra, which comes from rational homotopy theory, but turns out to be incredibly useful in commutative algebra. And that's going to come up next as well if I click on this. So uh, this, this slide, I guess, is um, also a teaser for the talk I'm going to give in Champ in a few days. So if you like this, you can come to that. And if you don't like this, you can avoid that. Um, the setup is I have a subjective local homomorphism. So R and S are uh, local rings, and S is R mod I for some ideal I. And I want to assume that ideal I has finite projective dimension in R. Um, so in this context, you can prove this theorem, which says, if the Conor module I mod I squared, so I mod I squared, um, it's an it's a module over S, and it tells you something about how you can deform spec S inside spec R. So it's kind of a classical thing with various uses. And the theorem says, if the Conor module mod I squared has finite projective dimension over S, then you have a complete section homomorphism. So I, then the ideal I is generated by a regular sequence. Um, so this was a conjecture of Vasconcelos from 1978. There's a, there's a whole bunch of history behind this I can't get into. So if you're interested in that, you can look at the preprint I have on the theorem in my, on my website. But let's skip ahead to this conjecture of Quillen, or I skip back to this conjecture of Quillen from 1968, which says uh, if the cotangent homology functors, um, so di, vanish for large i. So from the cotangent complex, you get this cotangent homology theory. And when when this was all introduced, Quillen made this conjecture that if these cotangent homology functors are vanishing for large i, then you have to have a convenient section homomorphism. So this, this is true. It was proven by Avramov in 1999. His proof, uh, it used a homotopy Lie algebra, and it, I would say it was, it's quite involved. Um, so one nice thing uh, about this next theorem is that we have, a, I think, a more conceptual proof of this. Uh, the other thing is that we have a stronger statement. So uh, we prove that if the cotangent homology functors di vanish for even a single i, then a single i greater than or equal to 1, then you have a convenient section homomorphism. So it's some kind of rigidity statement, um, slightly upgrading this, this conjectural quillen. Um, but for me, the cool thing about this is that these two theorems, you can prove them together. So um, we have in our in our preprint a theorem which has these two results as special cases. So it turns out these two conjectures are much more uh, connected than they seem. Anyway, um, in the last few seconds, I've got, I'm just going to go over some non-commutative stuff. So oh yeah, this first thing. So I'm really interested recently in this idea of a non of non commutative convenient section. So various authors have written about this, and there are all kinds of examples out there. But there's the general theory is still totally mysterious. It's basically there's all these rings out there which have um, 
which are non-commutative, but still display the same kind of homological behavior that commutative companion sections do. So it'd be really nice to work out a general theory of this. And one sort of promising direction of this is these proxy small objects, which haven't really fully been used in non-commutative algebra yet, I would say. Um, uh, this next thing, so I think a lot about Hochschild cohomology, probably more than anything else. Um, so I'll just quickly say I have I have some projects about computing Hochschild cohomology with Sarah Witherspoon and about um, deri uh, stable invariance of certain structures on Hochschild cohomology with Rubio de Grassi. Um, and then let's skip through to this last thing. I would say um, I have this project on gentle algebras with this cool guy, Raphael Bennett Tenhaus. Um, one reason to mention this is that gentle algebras, despite the fact that they look nothing like complete sections, are definitely one of these examples where you should think of them as non-commutative complete sections because they do display the same homological behavior. They have a theory of cohomology operations, and um, they're cool to think about. Anyway, let's just put this up here. These are some of the papers I mentioned in the talk, and I thanks. Maybe I'll see you in the champ talk. <laughs>